Hello friends, in our last video, we have seen that what is search, how it is created, what are the impacts of searches in the electrical power system, and what are the characteristics of it based on that how it is classified. In this video, I am going to talk about the types of search protective devices, characteristics of it, and working principle of it. Let us start with, so what are search protective devices? The search protective devices are the device used to protect the electrical appliances or the electrical installations from any electrical power surges known as transient over voltages. So which part of electrical power system you are going to protect? So either it may be in the transmission or it might be in the distribution or it might be in the consumer side. So based on this, the voltage levels and the current levels are going to be different. And based on that, you are going to have different mechanisms and different types of SCDs. Right, in the load side or in the consumer side, you may have very sensitive electronic devices or very costly devices and which needs to operate without uninterruptedly, right? So these devices have to given protection at most point. For example, there are medical equipment, there are bank servers, there are software servers, there are telecommunication networks. So these are very much sensitive as to these transient over voltages and which needs to be protected as well. So let us start. What are the different classification given by the IEC? So IEC classifying the zones as main distribution board, sub distribution board, and near to the load. So based on this, we are going to have the minimum required protection voltage level, 4 kilovolt, 2.5 kilovolt, and 1.5 kilovolt. And also, we classify these areas class 1, class 2, class 3, and class 1 area is our zone is classified as a lightning arrestor, and class 2 and class 3 uh, area is classified as a surge arrestor. Energy and speed characteristics of this SPD is at different part of the electrical power system. In High voltage side, we are going to have gas discharge tube or the spark gap type of SPDs, very slow in nature, but it can handle very high current or the high surge voltages. In the level two or the type two, we are going to have metal oxide varistors. The voltage level or the <coughs> current levels is going to be in moderate level and the speed of operation also in moderate and in the last. At the final stage, we are going to have very high speed devices, but the current handling capacity is going to be less, which is going to be like a uh, diode, like a transient voltage suppressor diode, so which is usually called as a TVS diode, will be used here in the stage three. And you can see in this slide how the voltage suppression takes place at different level of SPDs. Here in this case, you can see the surge is created at the input side mm -hmm. and which is of almost 9 to 10 kilovolt. And when it is passing through type 1 voltage suppressor or the surge suppressor, it suppresses the voltage from 10 kilovolt to almost 400 volt. A drastic change or the drastic. Uh, suppression takes place here and in the level 2 it is suppressed further to 100 volt and in the level 3 it is almost suppressed to the you know the system voltage which it operates in a normal condition so this is how the voltage that suppression is taking place in different levels in different type of that protective devices now let us understand how this device is going to function. In detail, I am going to talk about the 
spark gap and also we will discuss about gas discharge too. It is very simple to understand uh, this spark gap mechanism. When you have two electrodes placed nearby in an air medium and uh, you apply a high voltage between them, it is going to create the ionization process. Because of this ionization process, the arc starts created between these two electrodes and the arc is the medium which is going to conduct the electricity between these two. And the more the voltage between the electrode, that means the more the spark will be created, the more the current will pass through here. If, if the voltage is lesser, then that means there will not be enough amount of uh, uh, you know potential difference so that the spark will not be created. So this is the basic working principle of the spark gap, right? So let us understand to this graph, how this process starts and how it ends. So we have four, five different stages here. So in the first stage, when there is no spark appear in the system, so let us assume this is the system where you need to protect, and there is no spark, so that means there is no current passing through the spark gap mechanism, and typically you have up to 100 megaohms of resistance between the electrodes. And once the spark is created, then the potential difference appear across these two electrodes. And what happens because of this potential difference, slowly the ionization process taking place. And because of the ionization process taking place, the heat inside this uh, container will increase as well. Because of the heat, the ionization process still further increases because of this cumulative process. Then then slowly the arc starts formed between this electrode. Once the arc is start formed, then that means the current is transferred from the electrode number one to electrode number two, and it passes to the ground. So this process continues, and the more current flows through this particular device. And once the spark is achieved, the current flow goes through these electrodes without having any a problem because the resistance is being reduced. Now the spark is continuing and if the voltage is decreased or the transient voltage is disappeared from the system, then now the arc has to be removed. So this process is the arc extinguishing process that is in the fifth stage. So this is how this spark gap from stage to stage it is going to create and it is going to function like this. So from this discussion, you can understand how the spark gap mechanism works. And uh, to create a you know, spark between two electrodes, we need a very high voltage. Of course, you can easily understand that. But uh, the devices which we are going to protect uh, maybe, uh, they maybe get affected before this voltage is getting reached from the spark, uh, from the high voltage surface. So, the device is waiting for 3000 to 4000 volt, but the device which need to be protected maybe get damaged in the 1000 or 1500 volt itself. So this is one big drawback. The spark initiation should be having a very high voltage, but the device which we are going to protect is going to have a very sensitive voltage level. So this is one big problem of this spark gap devices. In some situation, this spark is initiated. The current, the you know, the such current is passing through the device. But after the transient voltage disappears, also the spark is not getting quenched. The arc is not getting quenched. So the current still further going inside the same path. So this is a, a big problem of a. Uh, you know, a spark gap type of uh, SPD. And one more problem in this, because of high heat inside this tube and inside this uh, particular device, it is going to emit uh, flames and ionize the gases, which may create a potential fire hazard. So we are we are trying to save the devices from the surges, but it is trying to give another problem 
like the file as that. So which needs to be addressed as well. So we cannot keep these devices near the flammable or explosive material because of this nature. And any protective devices should be very much reliable. Otherwise, how can you believe that it is going to protect you or right? So these devices are not much reliable because sometimes it fails to strike during uh, during the uh, you know over voltages and sometimes it fails to stop after uh, uh, you know once the arc is initiated. So this is not much reliable as well. <clears throat> and the you know utmost concern or the great concern is that it is very slow as well. So it takes you know very high amount of time to start the process, but by the time our sensitive nodes may be already get damaged. So this is another big problem. And so to avoid these problems, we are going to go for the next uh, type of sudden protective device. So which is nothing but gas discharge tube type of uh, a device. Here also we are going to have two electrodes and these electrodes are going to conceal in a, a ceramic material and this uh, ceramic material which, which holds these two electrodes is going to fill with the gases like inert gases. So these inert gases has the property better than the you know air medium, so which quenches the arc which uh, initiated during the uh, over voltages, and uh, also it has a better uh, characteristic of initiating the arc. And uh, it uh, it also has a better quality of uh, not producing any uh, flammable gases or uh, flammable uh, you know ionization process, and it also helps to keep the temperature within the limit. So these are the few advantages of gas discharge tube. And apart from that, it is very much similar to the um, spark gap mechanism. Here also we have two electrodes, so the ionization process taking place during the high voltages and because of this um, ionization process the spark is being produced between these two electrodes and because of that the current starts uh, flowing through um, this device and it goes to the ground so very much similar to the spark gap mechanism only the difference is the medium which we are placing inside is having a better characteristic so that it, produce, it, uh, uh, it works better than the spark gap uh, mechanism so here we have two different uh, varieties. We have two electrode and uh, three electrode varieties. And in the first picture, you can see uh, this is a two uh, electrodes where, uh, sorry, two pin type where we can connect uh, in line as well as in the ground two electrodes. So when the potential difference between this line and the ground is very high, then the spark will be uh, produced and it will go to the earth so that the device here the load side will be uh, protected from the such and uh, in the three uh, terminal uh, device you can see here uh, either the such voltage can come from here or the such voltage can come from here so the potential difference between this electrode and the earth will be seen when the such is coming from here or if the such is coming from here the potential difference between this electrode and the earth will be uh, uh, measured and this based on that the spark will be produced and uh, because of the spark then the current will go to the air potential. So this is how uh, the GDP works. Hope it is clear and uh, that's it for this video. Thank you and in the next video I'm going to talk about the voltage regulating type of SPDs so which is nothing but metal oxide varistors and the TVS diodes. Let us see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching.